So now we're gonna be moving on to the M in our MVC, which is going to be our models. And luckily for you, models are simultaneously one of the most important parts of our application and the simplest. A model is going to be what's called a POJO or a plain old Java class that is going to have these fields in it. All that a model is going to have is fields just one by one. And if you look at this club model, you can kind of notice what's going on. It is just a POJO. It is a model representation of a running club, which is going to be the most important part of our app. But we can't just really stop there. Like, well, there has to be more to it than that. We just can't create these classes and expect some kind of data transfer to happen. You would be correct because what this class is going to eventually turn into because of spring data is a database table. Yes, if you create a class and do certain steps to it, what is going to happen is that Spring Data is going to turn this class into a database table. And if you don't know what a database table is, it's just a fancy Excel spreadsheet without the GUI. And if you look at these fields, you will quickly notice that the ID is translated to a database column, the title is translated to a database column. Spring Data JPA does this, and what will happen is that you can quickly just fill up your columns with data. So if you create a running club and it's just, just call it the RC running club, you have your photo URL right here, you have your content, you have the actual data it was created on right here, and you can quickly notice that these are just almost Excel spreadsheets that are going to hold different running clubs. But we can't just stop there. Spring Data JPA has to know that these models actually exist and how do you do that? Well, there are these fancy annotations that you place on your actual class. The first one is going to be entity and entity is going to tell Spring Data that this is an actual model that we want to represent. The next is that you have to have an ID. What is an ID? As you can see here, there is an ID in our fake database right here. And an ID is a representation of what's called a primary key. A primary key, it stands for a unique representation for a database record. And we need to have this primary key, number one, so that we can link databases together. And also, what if we have two running clubs with the same name? We need to have a 100% unique way to identify columns, and the ID is that. The second is going to be the generated value. So there has to be a way to generate these, otherwise it will just be a string of ones. So what is going to happen is the generated value is going to automatically increment each database table through us through something called a database identity. A database identity is just a database feature that increments the actual value for us. So now we are in IntelliJ and the first thing that we need to do is we need to do a little bit of organization. So what I like to do is I like to create packages, fancy word for folders. All packages are our fancy words for folders and I'm going to create a package to model my models. <laughs> If that makes sense. Just to, just to hold all my models in one place so that I know where they are. Uh, we just made the club model. What we're gonna do, we just created our folder. The next thing that we're gonna do, we're going to create new, we're gonna go to Java class and we are going to create a Java class called club, which is going to be our first pocho. And I'm gonna be uploading all this to Git so I'm going to click yes and to not see that box again. All right, next thing that we need to do is we need to start populating our actual model with fields. And first is going to be our ID. And our ID will be of type, it could be type long, it could be int, but just for convention's sake, I'm going to call it a long. We have to have a title for our running club and it's going to be a title. Then we're going to have a place for our photo URL and we are going to have a photo URL. So next is going to be content. And the content is a paragraph describing what our actual running club is about, what do we stand for, and that is going to be a string as well. Next is going to be a private local time. And this local date time is going to be created on. So we're gonna go ahead, bring alt enter, bring that in. The next is going to be private. So we're gonna be private local date time, and it's going to be updated on.
that looks great. So now we, what we need to do is we need to start adding our annotations. The first one that we're going to need is we're going to need data Lombok. We're going to need a no arc constructor. We are also going to need an all arcs constructor. So if you want to, you could type out all these getters and setters. Some people do, but I prefer Lombok to take uh, all that out and do all the hard work for us. It works great and it makes your code look awesome. All right, so now we're out of Lombok world. What we need to do is we need to use our actual entity that we talked about when we were in the whiteboard session. And when you type in entity, something is gonna happen. This is going to get a red squiggly line because if you declare an entity and you declare to Spring JPA that this is something that needs to be created as a database table, what is going to happen is it's going to require an ID and this is what it's saying. Persistence Entity Club should have a primary key, which we will add just here in one second. The next is you can explicitly name the type of table that you want. You don't have to. You don't have to add this, but in our case, I just want to be a little bit more explicit and tell da Spring Data JPA that I want clubs to be named the clubs table, which we will see here in a second. You could also add a schema. So if you want to, you could also come here and you can add a schema, but I'm not gonna add a schema just because I don't really see the need in it. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to get that red squiggly line to go away. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our ID to our club. Now we're good to go, but not a hundred percent. We could still get by with just the ID, but we need to have this thing called a generated value. And a generated value is what's going to increment this ID right here so that we always have a unique ID. If we didn't have this generated value, it would just add one to the database each time and the ID would never be unique, which is something that we don't want. Also, we need to add this thing called a creation timestamp. So we do have the creation timestamp and we also have the update timestamp. So the creation timestamp and the update timestamp are what are going to allow us to automatically add these dates and whenever it's updated, Updated, it will also do the update. So you don't have to worry about initializing any date. This uh, creation timestamp will do everything for you. The update timestamp will automatically add it as well too. We're good to go. Now what we want to do is we want to check our actual public right here to make sure that this entity is actually being added. And as you can see right here, it does not exist within our run group course database. So what do we need to do? We need to go ahead and rerun it so that it will automatically create the table for us and we should see it automatically create here in a second so there we go it just create uh created the table clubs and you can see the exact details of how it was created and just for good times sake we're going to check in here and make sure that we have our tables so we have our clubs and as you can see spring data jpa just generated our first database table for us if you want to take a look at it take a look at the table to make sure that it is indeed correct you can and as you can see, this correctly models everything that we put inside of our club model. So we are pretty much good to go. Next thing that we are going to work on is wiring up our actual repository so we can get data to our view. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.